Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance! Welcome back to the second instalment of the Andy Takes That Chance International Break special. We can see that your masochistic tendencies have kicked in and you're back and thirsty for more. So let's get straight back into the action discussing these midfielders. So next I'm going to go on to wings. So collating wingers was probably more difficult than creating fullbacks and centre-backs. So we've not got a massive amount to pick from on this particular one. So uh, what I've done is I've cobbled them all together. Wingers are a bit more... They can transfer from one side to the other. And Neil, you've come up with one which I don't agree with, but you feel quite strongly about it. And he came in during the Powell era from Middlesbrough on loan, scored three goals in 15 appearances. Yeah, he's, he's just one of my, own, my dishonourable mention. He's not one of my... Sort of Carriol. Yeah, Carriol. I thought we were rubbish. I remember Carriol, one of my abiding members at Burnley away... It was an incredible moment where he got the ball on the wing by the, I think it was the touchline side. There was no one near him, and he just he just, it off he just run off the pitch with the ball. It was incredible. It was like there were an earthquake. I said that to Matt yesterday. Do you remember he, that? He, about ten yards yeah. inside pitch. I walked and out of the ground at that point. Literally, just dribbled yeah. it off the pitch. No one anywhere near him. Yeah, it was him. incredible. And then he ended up at Ellen Road. And that's a game where you've got Ishmael Miller, <laughs> and you know it was just, oh, wow. wow. So one of the the the. My pick at right midfield is a guy who, again, came in when there's no money. Um, he was released by Sheffield United. He only made two appearances. He was taken off after 50 minutes on his debut, and he came on as a sub for the next, and I think if, if we'd have had another sub that day, we'd have subbed him back off as well. And my abiding memory of this guy is watching him warm up at Berry with Andy Holdsworth, both on the bench at half-time, and Andy Holdsworth was pinging. Andy Holtz was a good player, pinging diagonal balls across the pitch to a young man by the name of Tyrone Thompson, who was struggling to keep the control of Andy Holtz with the ball on the pitch and twice fell over trying to control the ball. And I just I just thought, I don't care if we've got no money, mate. Football's not for you. I think another Scarborough guy again. Didn't he go afterwards to Scarborough? And, and Yeah, there seems to be a so great we've connection. Got, we've got a ream of distinct naffness on wings. And it would hard to pick, to be honest. There's... People always talk about Malvin Kamara, you know, they kind of throw that, you know, remember the days of Malvin Kamara, but... I thought he was bad. I, I, do, I remember but... Danny, you used to call him Toblerone feet as well, didn't you? Yeah. But Accrington, I don't know, everyone just had a good day at some point, and Accrington away in that pouring rain in the oh, cup yeah. where we were. It was incredible, it was just out of nothing, we were heading out of the cup, and I think one of two headers, or one header and kind of at the far post, and... He got, yeah. I'm sure he got two away at Millwall. Yeah, well. I remember him having a good game at Millwall, yeah. but he made yeah. 54 appearances, and apart from those two games, yeah, yeah, when yeah. a team sign him in January and then release him in June midway through a contract, like but, Paul but Bale, for us, though, you it, know there's something it, it, wrong. He's not in this list for me. You've got oh, he is for me. In, in early 80s, we signed a winger from Norwich who was an England under 21 international. For England international, what? Well, what he? <laughs> for a hundred thousand pounds, which then. Was a phenomenal amount of money for us. I'm the same man picked him. Mark Barham, and if he's not in this team, it's just wrong. He's not he in this team. Was at, well, it's wrong. Yeah, yeah this is wrong. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely wrong. wrong. He he was the most lightweight, pussy-footed. I, uh, <laughs> back, <laughs> back then, I I sort of had a, a, a rule for uh, whether a signing was good or not, and that was whether I had him in my Panini collection because if if you had him in your Panini collection then he was a top flight player. So I'm thinking I had Joey Jones at Chelsea and Terry Curran at uh, <coughs> Everton, Ian Banks Good at players, Leicester, and suddenly yeah. we'd signed this Mark Barham from Norwich who I had in the Panini collection. Not only that, but he had England caps two next to his name, and I thought, can't go wrong here. Can't, no. This is a fantastic signing. Wow. Like Neil says, big, fairly big money for back then. And I think he arrived with Andy May as well, who I also had for Man City. Yeah. So he was all right, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was okay. Yeah. I mean, it was it was Barham that completely ruined my Panini rule. And, and, and Andy May was probably the only decent player the day we lost ten one at Man City. Yeah, and that's clutching. So Mark Barham came in the year before I started watching eighty seven, eighty eight, and he well, made, you, you missed a treat. <laughs> he made twenty seven appearances, scoring one goal. But we we signed another one at a similar time on loan from Watford. Again, 
England on us. Panini. Panini. So and again, that was a double signing as well because we had Neil McNabb and again I had yeah. him. <laughs> Nigel Callahan. Who, oh. He had more... Oh, uh, DJ Callahan. DJ yeah. Callahan. And I think he must have already started. <laughs> Danny, it, just going back to Neil he McNabb. He was awful. Danny just pulled up a photo of Neil McNabb and his Panini stuck out <laughs> on his phone and the rage coming from him. He just even now, all these years on, he just can't put him out of his mind. But I, I, I've, I've got a couple, to be fair, who, who cost us a lot of money. There was a more winger, Nigel Callum, but he, he just didn't like a winger. No. He never bet anyone. No. Small. He, and, he was I, small. He, 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 he was highly rated. Yeah, he, he, sort of a John bit, Burns. he yeah, came well, along from Villa, who I yeah, think were Champions League. I think Villa paid big, big, yeah. big money for him from what? Well, European yeah, but he were Champions rubbish. League. <laughs> but we had another couple that I've picked out. Well, when we signed from Oldham for three hundred and fifty thousand pounds, which was massive money then, it was about three foot square, and to be fair, he could shift, he could run, could this lad, but unfortunately for him as a footballer, that's all he could do. His kit was five I mean, times too yeah. big for him as well. David Beresford. Oh, David Beresford. He yeah. was awful. Couldn't he couldn't control it? I remember him being good for Oldham. He couldn't, there, there was a, there was a game where we beat them three two on Sky, and he set them both goals, then. didn't he? Yeah. That were massive money for us then. And it was just, well, it, it, purely on fee alone and being that bad, he, he's got to be in for a shout for me. He doesn't appear on my list, but a man who does is a guy we got on loan from Man United and we bombed out after three games. And he's, he lives in infamy for me for when, when a quality England international has a corner in a gale force wind the last person you mark is the ball boy on the wrong side of the post. And a chap called Simon Davies came on loan from Man United just after we'd signed Ben Thornley, either a year after we'd, or a little bit after we'd had Ben Thornley. And he, he just did not live up to live up to those standards. And I, he, I just remember standing on the wrong side of the post on a corner and yeah. the ball going straight in. And Luckily for him that night, we got out of jail because we went 3-0 down. I still didn't forgive him. I still didn't forgive him for that. But he, he was bad. And some other some other names with big names who failed to live up and he's got quite a few votes on this and I was a little bit surprised was Lionel Ainsworth who came for a couple of hundred thousand pounds from Watford as well 31 appearances no goals had some problems before he signed for us some family slash local issues well I'll call it that yeah wasn't he from Nottingham he was some of his tweets were uh, probably better than Monitor Tin in his football and uh, but for money, like, what are you about? You're about a quarter of a million quid. To be honest, Neil, I remember that first game. I'm sure we played Hereford or someone. I can't remember, but he played for Hereford and he was very good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we that first game. I thought, wow, we've got a player here. You know, mm. often sometimes didn't last, did it? No, it didn't, didn't, and that's well. And, it and for me, he's messy. got to be in there, in the mix, purely on again. That for us, then bear in mind that when we got promoted two years ago, his record was only 1.8 million. This bloke cost us a quarter of a million quid. I think he, he signed at the same time as uh, Pilkington. He did, yeah. Same and I, was, day. I was more excited about Ainsworth because I didn't really know that much about yeah. Pilkington, but shows how much I know. Yeah, he signed the same day. So, another player who was a big layout at the time, over three years, and this gets thrown up as one of our worst ever signings every now and then, and he doesn't make the team or the bench or the reserve right winger. And that's a man who cost us £1 million over three years and couldn't complete his three years, and we had to pay him off to go and do national service oh. in his own country, was a guy who came in and looked absolutely superb for Sheffield United in the season before, signed for the same manager, looked amazing in pre-season and against QPR on the opening day of the season, and then turned into one of the most expensive and worst signings that we've potentially made. Mr. Donis. And I remember when he used to get the ball, and we had at the time we used to have this band, didn't we, that appeared in the Panasonic upper as it was then, who used to do the sort of Greek music, didn't they? he used to with the da 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 da, and he, I don't know what happened to him because he something switched from QPR away to the next home game where he just looked so bad, and ending the way it did with him not playing, he he, he ended up making twenty five appearances over a couple of years and. Danny is your number two right winger here, but paying him off so he could go to national service just seemed like a real kick in the in the, in the balls as well. Yeah, he he was not good, was he? And um, I think I remember one performance I remember, other than those pre-season games, like you mentioned, he looked he looked quite promising. But Grimsby away when it was sort of the end of uh, 
Steve Bruce there, he, he just, you could tell this, he'd, he'd had enough as well. He, he was off. So some other some other ones who, who make the almost list with Malvin Kamara is a, there's a game where, again, it's another academy player who probably shouldn't have played, but if you were there on the day away at Oldham for those 45 minutes, you know if you know. And James Hand appears for me on there. Similar stature to another guy who appears who we've all seen, and that was Mark Wells, who's got 14 points in this matrix, who could take a nice free kick but do little else. Des Hamilton, Neil, you're one who's who's put as a winger. I've I've had him in as a central midfielder because I remember him playing at Wolves as a centre mid. And Ian Mac- McInerney, was it? McInerney, yeah. <laughs> I He scored the first ever live goal I saw at Leeds Road, so I, I can't, can't hate the guy. <laughs> I can't hate he the guy. He cannot amend it. He, he I, I remember it. And the other another guy who scored that day went on my first game also gets a dishonourable mention, but not from me, from, from others. It was Mark Smith as well, who I didn't think was that bad. No, I wasn't that bad. No, I don't think he was that bad. But a guy who probably should have been better to complete this list, and Kossi, you mentioned him briefly, was six appearances, England youth internationals all the way with Man City, big reputation, signed for Derby, came in on loan. Surname actually technically means he should be partly creative, and, and that man was Lee Croft, a guy who had, yeah, that, had a strange body on him. He was very strange, and, and after he left Uddersfield, he stayed a long time. I think he went back to Oldham, didn't he, and, and kept getting re-signed there, like John Sheridan seems to get re-signed by the manager. But I remember being quite excited with his signing. I, I don't know whether we paid a six-figure f- fee for him and that as well. I think but, it was just a loan. And he was Croft. fast, but he really didn't, his control were poor. There was no end product at all. They were really frustrating playing. To be honest, I don't think he lasted right long for us. I just remember this barrel-chested winger with yeah. the skinniest legs like he you were young, see. but he looked like he was about 40 or 50 years he old. Did, he and that as well. It was really odd, but it's, honestly, up until probably last season, he was still you know, he did. applying his trades. So yeah. Neil's going to be disappointed here. Our last dishonourable mentions are Steve Jones, who gets a point from Neil, Cal Madrick, Paul Bealby, Roy Greenwood, who... It's a disgrace that Carl Madrick even gets a mention. I, I don't know who came the, up with him. I've never seen him. No, nah, it's wrong. He, he scored the winner when we beat Man City 1-0 at home the same season we'd lost 10-1 away, so he, he cannot be even mentioned in this. You you me. don't have nice Just things to say about alone. a guy called Roy Greenwood. Did you? No, he's like, he looked like a ginger Yorkshire ripper. <laughs> and he was rubbish. So, another... Player that finished uh, got uh, quite high rating from you, Danny. As your third worst right winger was Matty Young, a player, an academy player who ended up playing forty-two games, who probably forty odd too many. Uh, ended up going along the same route as a lot of them with Harrogate and what have you. Yeah, I feel quite harsh there because he, uh, you always feel and, harsh yeah, putting an but, academy player in who tried, but he wasn't very good, was he? <laughs> no, he bless him. Should not have been playing. Bless him. And that finished it. So. Neil, your right winger was Mark Barham. Danny, your right winger was Mark Barham. I've not voted him for... so I've, I've never seen him, so I couldn't give him any points. So, by default, the right winger is Tyrone Thompson in this team with backup with Nigel Callahan, who I remember being a bit of a statue. And Neil looks crestfallen. Yeah, I've Nigel Callahan's in mind, Neil. I'm with Cossie, oh, Nigel right. Callan's your worst right one, right winger. So the two wingers, sorry, so I've, I've done that wrong. So the two wingers on, on the right and left, because we've joined them, Tyrone Thompson and Nigel Callahan, which gives you a bit of relief, because then the sub-winger, Neil, are George Donis and Mark Barham. So, so we can we're bring him on and see him how bad he is. For early injuries, so everyone, everyone can witness <laughs> the debacle that was Mark Barham. <laughs> Central midfield. There you go, Neil. Central midfield. Oh, the, I think we're all unanimous in the, <clears throat> these. John Kelly. Two left feet. Wow. I'm, what a pl- player. Did he play for Chester after or before? Does I remember when we played after. after. Yeah, we played him again. And the abuse he got from that away end, I can never forget it. I think he was almost like therapy for like all the... That, that was actually when we played, we played Chester at Macclesfield on New Year's yeah, Day. Yeah, nil, nil. that it, yeah. And he, well, yeah, John Kelly. Is... Oh. The thing is, when you sign a player on loan who's that bad, why make it permanent? Yeah, it's just incredible who signed him. Owen Hans at Boothie's Beer and Banter this weekend, so maybe one of us <laughs> should go down and, and have a chat. They, they must have had a pint together at some point and, or just met and got on with each other. There's the Irish connection there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, it can't have anything to do with football because he was 
I say I only saw him have one good game, and that was as we mentioned earlier when he scored against Town, against Tim Clark when wow. he came back with Chester. Loves and he that loved that moment. I remember him running around like a madman. And to be honest, I, I always think as a football fan, if you give it, you've got to be Absolutely, able to take yeah. it. It's, so, it's right. just part of the pantomime, isn't it? I look forward to them making a podcast on us. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and John John Kelly is, is there in my <coughs> two in midfield, alongside a guy who doesn't appear much on, it doesn't appear on your list, Neil, but there's a chap who's got the who's pulled the wool over Huddersfield Town's eyes a couple of times, and it links to Willie McStay, whereby Town were interested in a player of with the surname of Hurst at Emily, and there was a striker at Emily called Glynhurst who was banging goals in and ended up scoring quite a hatful in the football league. He was quite a good player, and Brian Horton signed the wrong brother thanks to some smoke and mithers from Ronnie Glavin who again got us 20 years later with Tom Denton and something like 100 grand. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember him making his debut, not being able to get... A, a, usually a player, you can see when he gets the ball and he touches it. Do you know, and, and this for me was a George Weyer's cousin moment in that Chris Hurst was so bad, he couldn't get the ball. He could get nowhere near the pace of the game and the ball when he came on. And... There's a cross came in at the far post. I remember Brian Horton post match going, "Oh yeah, we signed this lad for fifty grand, and he almost got in at the far post at the end. He was about ten yards away, and he, it, I felt for him because he shouldn't have been there. He should have been Glidhurst. <laughs> it's all it's all about Brian Horton there. What he was doing at that point in time at Town because we'd we'd not signed anybody over the summer that uh, that season. What we'd done is release a load of players, and one of them was Michael Midwood, who we let go, and he signed. Uh, for Halifax Town. One of, one of the pre-season friendlies was Town against Halifax. I remember Jacko playing for for Halifax and Midwood was playing and he had a blinder against us. And the, the, the talk was, why did we let this lad go? Well, Horton then signed him back and he played. He made one appearance. But, I mean, he'd, Horton had just lost it at that point. So that Hurst signing was, yeah, he was terrible, but that I, I just put that down to Horton signing somebody who just he, he shouldn't have done. And... That's that's something what's happened quite a lot through <laughs> through Huddersfield Town history. Thankfully, we've got a really good scouting network now, and we've got people in place. You where this doesn't happen, and we can all be quite happy with what we've seen. For I know I gave Stuart Weber some stick early, but he did bring in some good players and David Wagner. So I'm not, you know, it's it's good natured. We had two players called Mark Hudson. One was better than the other. The Mark Safe Hudson Chesterfield. Honestly, they were. The same names, but that was all about. That was the same. He, Mark Hudson. My, my only issue why I can't have Mark Hudson in it is because he scored two winners against Bradford. Yeah, and that that is his only. That's why Wayne that's Burnett doesn't make my team. Saving grace. Same again. He was another one. But for, for me, the other the one who should be in there with John Kelly. I'm not sure if any of you three have put him down, but we're a lad who we signed from Bristol Rovers. He played against us in playoff final. My, my memory is where he missed Stewart. that sitter. Missed an he? absolute sitter. Um, and his best game for town came 80 minutes in goal away at Bury when Nico Vassen had been sent off. Again. And it cost us 500 grand, Marcus Browning. What a waste of time he was. I think if we signed anybody from Bristol by the name of Marcus at that time, it seems yeah, to be a good thing, to, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, it, it was... Uh, and that's why, with the fee alongside it for me, that's got to take some some weight on this one. So for me, Marcus he's, Browning... Will be he's got a couple of points. He, he features lower down on on my list and middle of, of Danny's as well. One player that rivals him is, I remember this player being bigged up probably a bit more than what <laughs> Jason Davidson could big himself up, which, which takes a lot. When you sign... I, I remember... Going back to the 90s, the reserve football was competitive. It was a thing. And when you sign somebody from a reserve team of a big club, it was a big deal. And we signed a, the captain of Liverpool's reserves, Liverpool being the best club side in, well, one of the best club sides in Europe. And we'd signed their reserve captain, who was still only quite young, 22, this 23. This was no Steven Gerrard. And he made his <laughs> debut at Burnden Park, Again, view slightly obstructed by the supermarket. And we talk about Chris Hurst not being able to get to the pace of the game, but Kevin Lampkin. <laughs> See, I, I've got I've got a theory on this. 
And I think Kevin Lampkin was clearly, clearly related to the Lampkin brothers who were very good on motocross bikes on kickstart. And I, I think he should have been there. He's not a footballer. He should have been on kickstart. When you think of some of the Liverpool he had, Sean Messi, Kevin Lampkin, I mean, the I, boot room one must have been doing... The, 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 only, one, the only one we feet. got that was actually any good, I've actually got on my T-shirt. Martin Kelly. No, Colin, Colin Russell. Russell. Colin Russell, He yeah. signed for 25 grand from Liverpool and he was in the 82-83 promotion winning side. And he, he were, was, not, he, was he I'm a small striker who could yeah, jump? Yeah, really yeah, diminutive. Yeah. But it, it was decent with Colin Russell. He, he had, a, he had a, a touch that was, was you could tell when, back when I was a kid. I thought he's got something special about yeah. him. His control and that was from Liverpool. Yeah, and he, he could play a bit good, Colin Russell. That was definitely his. Don't get me wrong, that was his level. But he was good at that level. Mike Williams used to really wind me up. He was terrible. I think did we get him from Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, he oh, was God, awful. Yeah. He's down as my number oh. one. What, I, I, what I, I, could he do? What, what he meant to do? This guy must have been so bad. I've suppressed him yeah. completely from my mind, oh. and he it, and he looked. He, yeah. he had the build of sort of like Patrick Vieira. I would have said he was a poor player. man's um, Carlton Palmer. Poor yeah. man's Dwayne Mattis, who also appears on yeah. the list. And Chris well, Holland's an interesting one. Isn't and, he? Anybody who was a poor man's Carlton Palmer. <laughs> it, that's Chris bad, Holland is uh, an interesting one, wasn't he? Because he played in that. Good side that we Come had. on, he would have the Neil Gazza. Chris, <laughs> yeah. oh, Chris yeah. Holland was. I don't think that helped him, Neil, though. Because again, I, I remember that being touted. But one of your friend of Gazza's, or there was some yeah, connection yeah. or something. It but it was from up there. Yeah. Wasn't it? But wow, he just used to pass backwards, never yeah. forwards, never yeah. did. He was terrible. I was waiting for him to explode. We had another one like that years ago called Phil Robinson. And all he ever used to do was get ball and pass it sideways 10 yards. No, Anton yeah. Robinson. Oh, well, he, he, he should be in team, Anton Robinson. Half a million quids worth of absolute garbage. I don't think it was quite that much. 450. I don't think it was that it either. Was, that's but what they asked it as, 450. As anyway. If you've paid for him, it's probably for too, much. too much. Yeah. Yeah. £4.50 would have been done. But Chris Holland made something like over 100 appearances. And he, he saw us go from Championship to League Two. And I don't it's know if you've ever seen... Is it? I don't know if you've ever seen the f- what I liken him to, and this might f- might sound a bit strange at first, but stay with me. I don't know if you've ever seen the film Sea Biscuit. Yeah, D- Danny's That's nodding. It, racing films. And what Sea Biscuit was was a horse who used to egg the other horses on by running alongside them. And for me, all I ever saw Chris Holland do was run alongside other central midfielders as they were burst into the box. And for me, he was Huddersfield Town Sea Biscuit. He was. He, j- he just. The only thing he did was shadow people and he never never really did anything and it's like you say Neil it's not a coincidence when you drop to drop two leagues and he's one of your mainstays in the team the modern day Terry Dolan and another midfielder that we've got in speaking of Bradford I've got Des Hamilton in there with him in, in the mid range for me I remember Desi Hamilton he was a right winger at Bradford I remember he scoring that goal yeah he scored that goal at Wembley didn't yeah. he which took Bradford up to um, our level at the time and then Newcastle paid a 1.5 million for him and then spent the entire time trying to get rid of him and we had him for 10 11 games back in the back in 1999 and I remember him scoring against Wolves on his debut he scored this like almost scissor kick from central midfield but after that he, he again he ended up going from Huddersfield to Campion in the Bradford league and I think that kind of demise tells you <laughs> Maybe where he was, and Mike Williams is also not the only Williams to appear on this list. Danny, another one, Cossie, you might remember as well, is a guy that we got on loan who played for Rotherham and Leeds and ended up going back to Rotherham called Andy Williams with scraggly, sort of yeah, curly Absolutely hair. Nothing, no, no pace, no drive, no shooting, no, no, nothing. But it's interesting, kind of a lot of these players that we're shouting out when they've come from Bradford and Leeds, I think they're always up against it when they start, so. Yeah. It is, you've got to kind of win the fans over then and, and be good at it as well. So when you're getting kind of cast offs and Des Hamilton again, he was saying with Eddie Yowes, they were like club, probably the legends. The, the only, the, there, really. There's a couple who were the caveat to that. Obviously, Peter Jackson. Yeah. And the other one for me who never had a problem with town fans were Lee Paul, it. Uh, Paul Reed as well. Oh, Paul Reed yeah, as well. Dugsbury, yeah, but, but they all got promoted. Lee, Lee, Lee Sinnott. Sinnott. Ducks, we never quite got it with town fans as much, and he cleared off back pretty quick, didn't he? Diego Aris Mendy. I'd love wow. to have been in that, you know, when they were. As being the out. town fans used to sing, Aris Mendy's having a party. I remember wow. he got in trouble for uh, the only thing. The only thing you could find about Diego Aris Mendy, because he was 
at Stoke, he got in trouble for constantly partying and the reason why Stoke got rid of him was and his neighbours used to complain that he would have his music up loud late into the night and used to be a bit of a party animal. And to be fair, when he played for us, he did look a bit half-cut. Dreadful. I remember that game at Preston where if you'd have told me that would have been going up from that from that point, we were dreadful. I remember being in a bar area about quarter past four, I think Grand National were on and two or three pints later. But yeah, we had some... Uh, oh, just saying I mean, that I haven't mentioned. So. I hope... I hope Dean Hall don't listen to this because some of the money that is kind of wasted on some of these guys obviously got a lot of right, but wow, Diego Arimendi. I mean, I think he got it on playing after, didn't he? Go Walsall yeah. and Barnsley. And I've, I've got another one that had uh, links to Manchester United. <laughs> this guy couldn't run. I, did, did he get a brain injury or something? I, I might be going from I, a I weak don't memory here. Service, but he played like he already had one. He was awful. Ronnie Walwork. What an absolute whopper he was. Whopper well worked. And he took that into his life after football. I think he's been charged with all sorts, hasn't he? I think he got yeah. stabbed, didn't he? So if he's, if he's listening to this, so I, I apologise. Don't come round and knock on me door. Yeah, some sort of car crime from memory as well. Yeah. He's in trouble for. Yeah. <laughs> one guy that but appeared... He rubbish, wasn't he? One guy that appeared high on my list and not so much on others was a guy who we got, who was a very good player and he used to be a scourge of as he played for, I think he played for Everton and Birmingham. And we signed him on loan when he was in his 30s. And he was rubbish. And the only thing that I remember him doing was having a fight with Tom Cowan on the field. And that's a guy called Mark Ward, who also, I think, had problems with the law. He he was about three foot high and all, wasn't he? He had small man syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. And to finish off the midfielders, we've got some dishonourable mentions. And these aren't mine. I don't think these are particularly anyone's here. I find they were a bit harsh. But Adnan Ahmed and Lee Fowler appeared. Costa, you've thrown in Wayne Burnett. You see, I don't know how you can have Lee Fowler. He scored at Cardiff, so that... The, the winning penalty in the uh, playoff so final, I'll, that I'll forgive him, him out straight he's, away. He's another one. I think we actually loaned him to Scarborough and I saw him there. And he looked <laughs> he looked a class above everybody on you the field. You spent too much time in Scarborough. Yeah, that's it? true. <laughs> I think he was one of uh, Dean Saunders' favourites, wasn't he? And that's not a good thing, because I think wow. he signed him yeah. wherever he went. Yeah, I I, I, wouldn't have, I remember him playing against Halifax in a friendly and looking really good. Like, like everyone coming away going, we've got the new Darren Bullock here. And Dean Saunders. <laughs> oh, dear. David Edgar. David Edgar. David Edgar. I, what was do you know what? I, I must have been blinded by his spectacular beard, his well-maintained beard. He but was awful. I wouldn't I have him anywhere near this. United after this agent yeah, must be yeah, an I absolute... Wouldn't. So I won't have him. I won't have him on this. Who's the two? Let's let's have it. So our two central midfielders, we've got a tie. John Kelly is the standout. He's Absolutely. got double the points of anyone else. But alongside him is a tie between Marcus Browning and Kevin Lampkin. I think it should be Marcus Browning purely on money spent and appearances made. I remember Marcus Brown having one good game, which doesn't admonish him from, oh, is that, I don't even know that's a word, but from the 36 bad ones he must have had. Kevin, oh, do you know, it's a tough one. Aris Mendy and Chris, I'd have had Chris Hurston, but they appear on, on the bench. Mark Hudson, another one I didn't like, but Brown and Lampkin have, let's have, let's have are a tied. Vote, let's have a vote between Brown. So Neil, you're and going Lampkin. for Browning, Brown Danny. Today. I'd go Browning. Lampkin. You see, I'd go Lampkin, <laughs> so he's tied again. Maybe we'll throw that one out to Twitter to see who gets in, but I don't know if many will remember Kevin Lampkin. And I do know someone who, on social media, who was Marcus Brownie's number one fan. I've got no idea why, but he, for some reason, thought he was underrated. I'll leave that there. There we go. The, so, the, men. the big dogs. So what I'm going to do before we get fired into the strikers, this list of strikers is astronomical. We've got over 40 odd here, so I'm just going to fly through the dishonourable mentions. Oh, God, there's loads. I'm going to di- fly through the dishonourable mentions first. Scott McDonald, Akpo Sodj. These have got no points, no votes. Scott Mc- but I've got mentions. Scott McDonald, Akpo Sodj, Phil Jevons, Gianfranco Labate, <laughs> Keegan Parker, Junior Mendes, John Makaliski, Alan Armstrong, Michel Ngonge, Alan Walsh. Peter Easto, Kevin Stonehouse, Terry Eccles, Barry Endine, Rod Belfit, Brian Clark, Colin Garwood, European Cup winner Peter With, <laughs> Danny Carr, Phil Stant, Paul Molden, and a harsh one I thought, Kevin Gallen. And no, one and one player on there who 
had one of the worst goal scoring records as a striker and came back and must have been one of the worst coaches to listen to. If you thought Chris Powell was boring and Andy Ritchie was boring. It's no coincidence that he's called Dyer. He was a no, Dyer football no, and he came back out. No, this guy is even more boring than Powell, Dyer, oh, Ritchie combined. And you may have suppressed this from memory, but I haven't. And the worst person, like Danny's looking quizzical. His name even belongs on this list, but he doesn't get any points. It's definitely Alex Dyer. Go on, mate. His name is John Dungworth, if you remember John Dungworth. You see, yeah. you're going back 70s now. When, it's, when... It, when he was sorry. coach, he was Andy. He, he, he almost got the job under Ken Davian, well, honestly. That would have been bad. He was pre rich. He didn't register for me because he's before, before 1980, so it's... Scott McDonald, yeah. just touch on him. He had an amazing career after that. I mean, I suppose you couldn't say That's the Wadsworth effect, isn't it? What I have think. you, but it, I remember that it was again the Scott Bevan, Scott McDonald, that, you know, that yeah. team. They came at the same time. Yeah, again, yeah. He would have, he's been unbelievable after he left Mick, us. Yeah, Mick Wadsworth was involved at Southampton before he came to us. And David Taylor was a guy who tried to steady the ship through a very choppy time, and he's a smashing guy. If you ever listen to David Taylor, ex-town chairman, he's a really top bloke, really good guy, and there's a lot to like about David Taylor. But maybe he made a mistake when he took a phone call from Brian Robson. Bobby Ge- Robson. Sorry, Bobby Robson, who was, again, a fantastic football person. I loved Bobby Robson a lot. But he took a phone call from Bobby Robson to give the nod to Mick Wadsworth over Mark Hughes. My, uh, going back to my Scarborough supporting friend, said we're <laughs> in for some great football when we appointed Mick Wadsworth. We didn't. But we'll come to the manager afterwards. And Where better to start than Alex Dyer? Feats on fire, Alex Dyer. 16 appearances, two goals. I remember the header he scored against West Ham in the League <laughs> Cup. And the most... Do you remember the David... V... Not David Villa. Ricky Villa scored that iconic goal for Spurs in the early 80s, which they showed over and over That's again. Cool yeah, I don't know if it was a replay, was it, or something. With Aussie Ideas. Against Man City. And there was... And do you remember when fantasy football did Phoenix from the Flames and they did a clumsy, it was brilliant, but they did a clumsy sort of nod to certain things. And I remember Alex Dyer with a very clumsy nod to Ricky Villa, (laughs) bumbling his way past several Ipswich defenders with the ball off of his shin before (laughs) toe-poking it past, was it Craig Forrest maybe in goal? Then he he ran over to the bench and said, look, I've just served you your job. (laughs) 30 seconds later, Kieran Dyer equalised. Yeah. Was, oh, I think what's funny with Alex Dyer, when he came back as a coach, when it, when it under Chris Powell. It, he was a top man, yeah. Yeah, a really nice, likeable guy. No one, but, the oof. exam never liked Alex Dyer. They, they never <laughs> mentioned probably one of the worst <laughs> players to ever wear the blue and white shirt. But, he, yeah. To be fair to him, Alex, well, maybe not to be fair, but Alex Dyer's no. job at the time was to fill in for Marcus Stewart. No, and no. those are Those were big shoes to fill in, I'm afraid, Alex. Chris Hay, you didn't do it. Chris Hay, 52 appearances, 6 goals, shunted to the left wing quite a lot, but 25 goals one season for Swindon. We sold Marcus Stewart and tried with a glut of strikers who appear on this list to replace him. Panasonic, Kevin Gallant. Alan Armstrong, Michelle Ngonge were two of them who appeared on the dishonourable list. And Kevin Kyle as well (laughs) came in at a a similar period. Another one who went on to do well after those, but I can just hear the fans chanting in the background, Fuller, Fuller on, Fuller on, he bougie. When I'm down, I'm feeling depressed about Uddersfield Town and, you know, Premier League when we go games without a win. I just remember Fuller on, a bougie. I think he came on loan from Cambridge United or Preston. Or Preston. And he was big. He was like, reminded me of Kevin Francis. He's about seven foot, seven. yeah. And I thought I was quite high hopes because he fitted our style at the time. Oh my if goodness. you thought Nigel Callahan was a statue... <laughs> <laughs> he only made two sub appearances. I, I remember at Mansfield seeing him for the first time, and I remember him warming up, and he looked bad at warming up as well. <laughs> he, Fuller on Bougie, <laughs> appears on the bench. I'm going to read out, he's still playing on somewhere. He's Alex Dyer. Cheated a wage. Alex Kevin Dyer Gallagher, is up there. Another one with master stroke. Kevin Gallagher was finished, Kevin Gallagher I think, wasn't he? He was tired in his own head before he came to us. He, do you know what I, I attribute a quite a lot of this and Lee Ashcroft as well to Wadsworth and Neil I think you said a local a local butcher or something paid for it was, something like that Murfield or something paid for, for, paid for, for a month and still playing for on a budget oh, sorry about him lads no. 33 
Preston North End, Uddersfield Town Loan, Barnsley 3 appearances, Peterborough 2, Cambridge 34, Swindon 14, Brentford Loan 2, Wickham Loan 1, Wickham 4 appearances, Shoresbury North, St Albans City, Macclesfield, Accrington, and Weymouth Woking, Grades, Southport, Bournemouth, Tooting and Mitchum United, Ch- Cheshire. How can you, everyone just be, I think. They've all, they've all thrown and had they, aren't they? Six foot five from Nigeria. Playing position striker, but look at his goals. Tell you there, look at that. It's just none. He got nine in 34 <coughs> for Cambridge. Then he did score till 2009, three for Grey's Athletic. Look at that. He's just incredible. He appears on the bench in this team. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm going to throw him one. Neil, just before I finish, I've, loved, I've got to get out of just full in a bougie, but he pressed nothing. So we got him from there. He'd been there for three years and he hadn't scored a goal and he hadn't played a game. Why would you sign him? Huddersfield yeah. Town. I think it's finance very, very is dictated. Town. Oh, I feel better now. But there's, there's, two, there's two or three that should get mentions. Robbie Simpson. 300,000 quid. He was rubbish. That I remember going to a Q&A and that 300,000 was muted in well, the press. But it, if, but it was, it was, if it was three I think pounds. Dean Hoyle and uh, Lee Clark said it wasn't even half that. But well, still, we still if, paid. If, if, if we, we pay any kind of fee for him, it was too much. He only made four starts, did Robbie Simpson. Both. 16 appearances, Fourth one goal. And he appears, I've given him a couple of points. It, it came, he was quite highly rated at Coventry and he, he scored goals in the championship and we were sold a bit of a dud. But thankfully we had Jordan Ro- If you've got the supply line well, he, of he, Roberts, he, Pilkington, they all... Simpson started the game, first game of the season away at South End, game. got subbed. With Theo. On came Jordan and Novak and, and, Novak and the rest, as they say. We obviously, our boot room connections did us proud again in the striking department. Brought John Newby from Liverpool. He's my number one. He's oh, John Newby. Word. So I'm not, he's not even in my team. Because Berry signed him for £100,000 and he was knocking goals in for fun. And he was, I know Jack who goes on about the eight players, he was technically our marquee signing that summer. He was our one that <laughs> we were we were happy with. He was the one that we all raved about prior to Effie Sodji coming in and 15 appearances, no goals, no effort. But he, he was a shocker. He was a away at Bradford for reserves. He, he, he did that, nothing that for John the first Newby's team. Some total of anything for the town. One he, of my friends yeah. was uh, an honourable shout for Mr. Phil Stant. Yeah, Phil Stant was He right. appeared on the dishonourable mention. Another, yeah. another, didn't he play for Bury or not? Yeah. Lincoln doing yeah, it from the army. Lincoln, he was in the army, wasn't he? He, he looked scored like it. He scored a lot of goals at Hereford. Yeah. Every, every other week he'd yeah. score for Hereford, but I felt that was basement division. But with loads, I mean, but the, the, it's a catalogue of war. When Mr. Mr. Scarborough man, another friend of Danny's, Mr. Craig Whittington. Yeah, he had a record, didn't he? Came on as a sub against Leighton Orient, and that was it. The first he was, home game at uh, the Macau Park. If you remember, Neil Warnock used to love a non league signing. And Craig Whittington came well, in for twenty grand from Scarborough. I that, don't think he signed another non-league player again <laughs> after this. With that Scarborough, I remember the Scarborough when he signed him. It was uh, Steve Wicks who used to be at Chelsea, and uh, Blackburn were linked with him at, at the time. And it was sort of a bit of a coup for uh, Scarborough to get him. But watching that team at the time, we should have had Sean Murray from there who ended up at Bradford because he was the only decent player they had around that time. So there's loads in there. Terry Austin. Terry Austin's got to get a mention. He's before my time, but I, the, again, that was another local multi, local millionaire paid for him from Mansfield. I, I don't know, 120,000 quid he cost. He was a lot of money, thing, wasn't yeah. he, sort of that, that era. And did he get off to a good start? Yeah, scored got, four or five goals, yeah, he didn't he, quite start. early on, and, and then, and then did score for about yeah. 40 games, yeah. Another one we had on loan was somebody who actually played in the last European Championships for Wales, Simon, Simon Church. Church. He was dreadful for Huddersfield Town. Dreadful. Grace he scored against his debut, didn't he? But where was it? I can't remember now. He scored against Leeds, I think. Were it Barnsley? Yeah, I think it was Barnsley got an edit, didn't he? But, yeah. did he, but did I, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. My two. My top two. Second place, Ishmael Miller. <laughs> he frustrated the hell out of me. Big, powerful lad. He, I remember him. He scored for, against Town for Yeovil when we battered him 5-1. He went bulldozing through everybody and leathered it in. We signed him on back of that, as we've signed so many players on back of a performance against us. My Junior my other Mendes half, being one. my other half is one of the nicest people you'll you'll meet, and she never says anything mean about anyone apart from me. And within about twenty minutes, twenty minutes of watching Ishmael Miller, she'd nicknamed him Lummox. 
And she is absolutely but it, nail on the head. <laughs> what annoyed right. me with Miller, though, it's almost like we're cheaters out of something. Because I remember that game against Bolton when he scored two, and he really put himself about. But and he scored, but... He once went for over a million yeah. pounds. But, but he was, he was lightning. He's got the moves. When, when he was a kid, he was lightning. And once he lost that... He's that older now, space. and he's come back into football yeah. after the yeah. start, hasn't he? Once he'd lost that pace, he, he didn't have, have much. Ishmael Miller, and other one, if this bloke is not in this team, and I know he's got a bit of a cult following with town fans, don't know why, because he cost us a lot of money. Apparently, it was a really nice bloke in dressing room. Well, three hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and I think it was one hundred and fifty grand on promotion. Mail, it's so it's half a million quid. Controversy. I'm not going to quote his so wages. So bad they named him twice. Alan, Alan Ooh. Lee. <laughs> so Alan Lee, one hundred and one appearances, twelve goals. So that's almost one goal every yeah. ten appearances. You look at his first season with us, and I think you've had about 30 league appearances with zero goals. And we're talking about like rubbish defenders such as Andy Duggan, who made 29 appearances and scored three goals. The yeah. thing is, you're a striker, a target man striker with Gary Robertson, Pilkin, and two of the best crossers in the lower leagues firing them in at will, yeah. and Jack Hunt later on. The, the, only, the only decent game he ever had was when we'd got battered 4 0 at Carlisle and in home leg we beat him 3 0 and he, got, he scored 2. I'm, I'm holding this game and against other him. Other than that, because I'll, I'll just, I'll never, I'll, with, I'll, Alan Lee's off. With time running out, he had a chance to equalise, I think, in that game and he missed the biggest sitter that cost us perhaps a Wembley well, he game. He'd, he'd got his two foot year in well, early in the game, hadn't he? He's, he's, he's he's other, to be fair well. to him, he did score one more goal that season and that was Arsenal. That That's a good, I think that's a good memory for Alan Lee, but. For me, but I, I think that's why a lot of people have got him on this pedestal. Mm. Yeah. And it, for me, for the that, Alan Lee that you were an apt ending. If you could have designed an ending, no better for, for a guy Wembley. that penalty at Wembley. It was good. It was the worst it, penalty ever. That, that should have been the end. They should have marched him out of the stadium and gave him a, a If Simmons had had to die for that, it wouldn't have reached anyway. That I just thought that as Alan Lee's career was so yeah. just summed up. To be fair, it no. wasn't the worst penalty that day, but Damien yeah, Johnson. Why, <laughs> why, why does he have this cult? Why? Why? I think when I think when players get a song like a sometimes, it's, I think that second season he did give hundred percent. He charged around, but I mean he swung his elbows at people as well in that time. That Brentford goal is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, where I remember yeah. the one he, <laughs> he once he once got in a bit of a who was it against? Oh, I'll cancel that bit. I can't remember. No, you don't know about Alex Bruce at Hull, are you? It, I I could, it, it could be, yeah, it could be. But it, oh it, yeah, he smashed Alex Bruce with his elbow when he ran. It, it was a disgraceful. A it was a disgraceful weapon. assault. I think, that, like, I think that was the only way you could say it. it was awful. What, what was it was like? It, you do say it's a cartoon character because he did. He was that hard man in that he'd swing an elbow. But if you put your hands on him, he, he'd, he'd just throw himself over yeah, as well. well. I and saw. Then, I saw him as a pantomime villain. He then grew his hair and threw an Alice band in it, and that just put the nail in the coffin for me. Every, every game though turned when he came on. Every game turned into a, a long ball fest of Alan Lee. Flaming diving it, the, the game just turned into something which I really disliked in that it was yeah. just Alan Lee the pantomime villain yeah. throwing himself around elbowing people Who's trying to get bits Neil? and pieces Alan Lee and Miller oh, Miller Miller used to drive me mad Look, Lukas Jukovic always has, gets and he always used to do well against town but I remember that first game he came off bench against Leeds and looked really good I he played quite well excited, yeah that game against Cheltenham when he threw his shirt that yeah. you know it had gone from yeah, well, we don't, I don't know about Hero, but from I, I think he went. I, re, I remember when we signed him. It's one of them when I used to watch transfer headline day till last gubbins on Sky Sports, and it got they went over to Everton at last about eleven o'clock, five past eleven, and report were on about Everton who they'd signed this that another day, and one other note: Lukas Jukovic has gone on loan to Huddersfield, and I'm like, oh. And then obviously the he rest, was, as they say, he wasn't a bad player at like Swindon, I think. But he, I think he had a breathing problem when he yeah, signed for us, didn't he? Some medical condition that he had that was supposedly the and reason it, behind his lack of stamina. Yeah, and it it didn't work for the guy. What I loved about Town, though, we always seem to get these players when they're past the best. Some legends of the game, Peter, with incredible with like oh, European Cup winner with Aston Villa, but Frank Stapleton as well. Yeah, Frank Staple. I I thought Frank Stapleton did some things in that that season. You could. They played him kind of out wide. It would have I, been, I remember Frank Stapleton's last match. Clever. His last match for Town were away at Rochdale in FA yeah, Cup. Yeah, Rochdale, we won 4-3. We won 4-3, yeah. and then I think day after or two days after, went to Bradford as manager. I, I saw him have an absolute blinder in a, in a town shirt, but it was at uh, that Frank Worthington testimonial when he was playing <laughs> alongside Graham Sooners. I think that's why we signed it. It was only a, sort of a week or two later that we actually signed him. He also played when we beat Lincoln United 7-0 in FA Cup. I, uh, yeah, I remember that. 
Kevin Donovan was good that game. I remember that. I'd have been good against them. So there's there's only a handful of people left in this. Uh, Danny Cosy, you've given Nat Brown a couple of points for this one. Um, Kevin Gallagher's already been mentioned. One player <coughs> that you used to enjoy... You didn't used to enjoy the player, Danny, but you enjoyed his wife sitting near you. I had to finish that quickly. I think it was his girlfriend, but yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I was, could I just say I was only 12 as well, so don't put anything rude into that. We were all 12 ones, Danny, don't worry about it. But the player in question it sounded great, an Italian surname. The reality, reality of it, Danny's shaking his head. Yeah, when you say Italian, I remember an interview in the programme where he said uh, he was asked who he'd, who he'd play for if he played international football, whether it be England or Italy, and, and he chose Italy. And just, no, you don't need to ask him that question. And that name is Mike Chachery. Chachery. I remember a couple of mo- moments. I remember being at Chester when he was seeing Jenny Bradley, wasn't he? Yeah. Carnation Street. I remember at Chester yeah. when the old ground and they were singing Jenny Bradley's The Town when she was stood up waving. Yeah. And, but I also remember Chachery. That, he won an amazing game against Nottingham Forest. I think we probably, did we beat him or lose an extra time at Leeds Road? It went on. Away goals. Away yeah, goals. goals, yeah. Ch- did we win? We won, didn't we? No, we drove three a piece. Yeah, Chichiri, like, turned it around. I just remember that. He, like, he were running off to the te- tennis, like, sliding on his knees, and he, he yeah. tapped one in for about three yards. But, but yeah, it was so frustrating, because he never used to run, did he? Unless the ball were at his feet, he just would never run at all, and he were a boo boy target. A lot of the time, yeah, well, back in them days, yeah, well, they were big target yeah. for it. So, do you guys want to know who the strikers are? Alan Lee plus one, hopefully. Alan Lee is joint top with feet on fire. Hey. Alex Dyer. So, Alan Lee and Alex Dyer complete the two up front with Fola Onibuje. <laughs> The first substitute. <laughs> Still going. You, you, you couldn't be guaranteed less goals if you tried, could you? With Robbie Simpson and John Newby close behind. One player we didn't mention, and I'll touch on him briefly because the reasons of him playing for us probably aren't worth going into, and that was Paul Macari with 14 substitute appearances, um, who played when his, his dad, Lou Macari, was manager. And I used to watch Paul Macari warm up, and he could strike a ball really, really well. But again, that's it was almost like a um, hockey. You know, in hockey, you have your penalty corners, and he could take, he could actually strike a ball. But as the game's going on, he just couldn't get into it, and he was a little bit out of his depth. But so fourteen sub appearances, no goals. The question everyone's asking around the world of football is, which manager is going to look after this brilliant bunch of players we've picked? The results are in. Neil's throwing in a dishonourable mention for Chris Powell down at the bottom end. I. I personally wouldn't have Paul. Andy Ritchie's also got a dishonourable mention from me, Neil. Andy Ritchie was a disappointment. He was also the second choice, and Phil Parkinson kind of stitched that whole thing up, didn't he? Andy Ritchie was dreadful. I my all, when, when we lost away at Leeds four nil, he threw Smithers in for his debut, and it would. He was almost cheering every time he scored. I hated Andy Ritchie. Were you thrilled with a cup run, though, Neil? I hated Andy Ritchie. I enjoy that cup yeah. run. <laughs> uh, the man there's, there's there's only three really managers that stand out way beyond everyone else and everyone Wadsworth will know this Wadsworth, Wadsworth. Wadsworth Turnan and Supermac I've or Stan Tyrant as he was known I've put it's a very close thing between three Wadsworth had to cope with severe financial issues but he the thing is, he, when, his old image when, and personality though was completely he was, he wrong. He was very, very dire. And the thing is, when there were some things Wadsworth did, he played this four-three-three system and well, he, denied he played a four-three-three he system. He had his own website, didn't he? Yeah, that was a good. That was a good Google. I remember, and we, and we probably can't mention that. Uh, no, um, <laughs> he. There's some things Wadsworth did. He used to play John Stead right wing, far out on a right wing. Danny Schofield as a deep lying playmaker in front of the back four. Well, Scott McDonald, Scarlet Lee connection. Ashcroft came in yeah. to score goals and he played them wide and it it didn't help him. So we might have been going down the pan he financially, just tried but to overthink and over everything that he did was trying to be clever. And obviously, instead of just simply a lot of simple footballers. Simplify it, make what, it easy. What he did Chris was Powell different. I feel like Jurgen Klopp to me, mate, with his pre-match. What he did was different, but 
if you're going to do something different, stand by your convictions and tell people you're doing things yeah. differently. Don't deny that you're doing something and claim you're playing four four two to appease people. It's still not worse for me though. Do you know I've I a Wadsworth story, and Danny, I'd, I'm, I'm going by a memory here. There's an old HTFC World Report kicking around, wasn't there, of uh, the Net Terriers when they played a Huddersfield Town Select. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember him playing in that, and he was his, his coaching advice to his fellow players. He just used to yell, "Pass it, pass it to him." That, that's, that's all he shouted. So Wadsworth is the first mention. I. Neil, you've gone for someone different, and I didn't see this guy much, but I heard about this guy, and everything about this guy is wrong in a way that when he came in, he said, I will have Brazilians playing for Huddersfield Town, and this was back in 1987, I think. Since then, how many Brazilians have played for Huddersfield Town? This man zero was in charge of Huddersfield Town when we lost. 10-1 at Manchester City and for that alone six of those were offside though don't they that's oh, alright then but for that alone he's the worst ever but he he had no plan he almost looked out well he, I think he was just one always half cut he'd no, it was basically he did, he did have in. a problem didn't he so yeah it, yeah it was brought in as a name it was a classic get a big name in epic fail did he did he go somewhere else and do okay was it Fulham or something he was, was at Fulham before us. Yeah. And um, I think we were pretty much the end of him. Like you say, there were, there were other influences there, where, which is why I've sort of knocked him down to third on my list because I excuse him that. One play, the, the person I've put first in mine was because he was given money. Fi- Wadsworth was up against financial constraints. Malcolm McDonald had his demons, fair enough. Um, but one man who one should have Christmas no dinner. excuse... But he was given financial backing and he ended up going to sign a load of players from Lancashire because that's what he knew. We ended up with Steve Jones. I remember being excited we signed Liam Dickinson on loan because he looked really good for Stockport and it ruined his career <laughs> moving to Huddersfield on loan. And Stan Turnant was given a really good opportunity with a, a smashing chairman and finance and he he signed Keegan Parker amongst others and had his bottom of the league with pretty decent backing and there's the whole academy argument where he almost he throttled one, someone for wearing wrong colour trainers all he signed. and Gary Roberts Gary Roberts yeah one of my favourite all time players but Stan Turnett's high up on my list on there I, I don't think anyone comes close to those three Wadsworth, McDonald and Turnant. <laughs> I've just got cramps on it no sorry I think Cossie, <laughs> Cossie's it's stood end, up. Is that it's just those three. So we've put them in the matrix and do you know who comes out as number one? The manager of this sinking ship is Mick Wadsworth. Ably backed up by Malcolm McDonald. I just remember, boys and girls, when you're next feeling sad about town losing the Premier League game, just listen back to this and it'll be yeah. beautiful therapy. Hopefully, if we've missed anyone out, you can tweet in uh, Matt and uh, let us know. But please don't tweet the player because we don't. <laughs> Stuart Hicks, Danny, you've noticed, is on Twitter and, and he's as good at working Twitter as he was at football. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. I'm just in, trying to think how bad would a drunken Mick Wadsworth be? I think that's something that we don't, wanna, we don't want to contemplate. So, just for the final <laughs> gatherings, the team of renown, shall we say, <laughs> is. But not the pride of the town. Tim Clark in goal. (laughs) Willie McStay at right back. Kevin Sharp at left back. Centre backs are Gordon Tucker and Eddie Yowds. Flanking two central midfielders are Tyrone Thompson, Nigel Callahan, with John Kelly and Marcus Browning slash Kevin Lampkin in the middle. And up front, making use of a wonderful supply line, is Alan Lee and Alex Dyer. This has been Andy Takes That Chance as International Break Special. Thank you for getting in touch and I've probably got some editing to do. So thank you very much and we'll be back again soon. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. He's missed. 
Steve Simonson clears the flame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Pete's got a chance yes. and he scores! Jack Pete scores! Heffern is in there! Schmidt scores for Field Town! 3-2 Town! For a sherry, Danny Ward saves! Danny Ward saves! The quack was in, round to Heia! 2-0 Huddersfield Town! Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance!